I'm Sergeant Mike Farr, F-A-R-R, the Denver Police Traffic Investigations Unit. Uh, we've asked you here today to uh, provide what would be a final report on the collision that occurred on September 11th involving the Legacy High School uh, bus uh, owned and operated by Adams 12 schools that occurred at DIA. Uh, the uh, investigation has concluded and the uh, word that uh, we'll use to describe the findings is inconclusive. Um, most crashes, in fact all crashes that we investigate, have as contributing factors really three primary area areas that we look, and that's human, vehicle, and environment. And this crash is no different. We certainly looked at all of those. So starting with the environment, the uh, uh, area, uh, roadways were clear, the weather was, was good, the sun was still high in the sky, there's really nothing environmentally that led us to believe that an environmental factor was a contributing factor to this collision. Uh, we were able to inspect the bus with one of my certified inspectors. He found the bus, other than the collision damage, to be in good uh, operating uh, condition. There was nothing that they discovered that led them to believe that there was going to be uh, any reason to think a mechanical failure on the part of the bus uh, was going to contribute to the crash. So it brings us down really to that, that final of the three factors, the human. Um, as we had uh, indicated in earlier uh, briefings with the public and the press that uh, looking at the human you look at what bar what may have gone wrong we look at was this an intentional act or purposeful act as we've had an opportunity to look into the uh, driver's background Miss Chopper there's really nothing there that would lead us to believe uh, conclusively that it was an intentional or purposeful act uh, you know the uh, the word certainly we'll use is, is suicide was this a suicide attempt nothing in the background, nothing uh, evidentiary was uncovered to lead us to believe that. Also then, of course, there's medical. There was some uh, uh, things about the collision, that is the route back to the terminal, as we've discussed. That was unexpected. Um, we've certainly not been able to undercover in talking to any of the occupants on the bus at the time. Do we know why that route back to the terminal building occurred? Um, and of course, in waiting for the autopsy and the coroner's report, uh, they also, as a result of the collision uh, forces, the uh, body was in such a condition that they could not conclude definitively that a medical condition uh, is going to play a, a contributing factor in this crash. So uh, as we stand here today and have uh, really exercised uh, talking to all the witnesses that uh, uh, were made available and known to us, the uh, condition of the vehicle, the condition of the environment, we simply are going to have to call this one a mystery. There is no definitive answers as to why this crash occurred. So that really wraps up my comments. Are, are there any any questions? Yes. Well, that very good point. We. We really try to provide answers. Um, certainly, my job as a police officer is to look for potential criminal violations and hold offenders responsible, but that's not all of my job. Certainly, a good portion of my job is to provide answers for loved ones, for uh, family members uh, directly and indirectly affected by this. And it, it's troublesome when you're unable to do that because that, that certainly is one of my goals and objectives. But this is one of those cases that simply there is nothing in any of those factors that we look at that uh, leads us down to a, a road where we can draw any any strong conclusions. Was the height of the bus higher than the lowest part of the overhang on level four? Certainly, our, our investigation did conclude that uh, the uh, bus was approximately uh, 10 to 11 feet high, as I recall. The uh, posted clearance for that part of the airport she was heading for is nine foot six. So one could conclude, and we, we uh, did not, uh, at least uh, that I'm aware of, uh, try to line that bus up to see if it would actually fit physically. I, I left the scene prior to doing that. But based on the height of the bus and the height that's posted there, um, it appears it would not have fit. Is it therefore conceivable that the driver could have known that and driven off the road into the building? You know, uh, Conceivable. Uh, it's hard for me to conclude that because, again, uh, we had witnesses on board the bus who indicated to us that there was no effort 
to uh, stop emergency braking, and there was plenty of room prior to coming to the entrance of 4 to apply the brakes in uh, a non-emergency fashion to bring the bus to a stop if I thought that were the case. So uh, while that's possible, Rick, I, I certainly I, I would be skeptical if that were the case. There was room to bring the bus to a stop prior to that. You know, I, I think it was the, the fact that we had um, so, uh, so many folks involved, and that is we have the uh, adult bus driver, the uh, adult coaches, and the kids on board, and uh, great public interest in, in what happened here uh, because we care about our kids. And so trying to provide answers and trying to, to at least find out what occurred here and then is there something we can do to prevent future occurrences um, and, and we're unable to do that. So that's a little frustrating. Um, do we have uh, an opportunity, as, as earlier discussed, to provide answers to the, the family of the decedent? And we don't. And, and uh, I wish we did. Is it rare? Absolutely. Um, it does happen, however. Um, in the cases that I am attached to, very often we find a proximate cause. And that's the legal definition of what set this chain of events into motion? And very often we are able to identify that. Um, in this case, we, we can't. It's rare, but it does happen. Certainly, the uh, the other buses. There were three buses in the convoy. And the answer is yes, they did go back around because they are a pack. And uh, they, they leave together, they arrive at the school together, everything is done um, for safety together. Um, my understanding is that there was no radio communication between the buses and that they simply followed because that's what the lead bus was doing. We don't. The word is probative. That is, when we look at video evidence like that, is there something that helps explain the story? And here, there really was not. And, and part of that is simply because we don't always get to pick where our video cameras are stationed and where our, our crashes occur. And so we're left with video that is sometimes grainy. And we can see dynamics, but we can't make out people. We can't make out certain evidence. But we can find out, let me look and see, is there something about the travel nature of the bus that, that gives me a clue as to what happened. And certainly that wasn't the case there. Now, I had the chance to, through some witness interviews, ask about that very, as we were coming back to the terminal, uh, with the trip back to the terminal being unusual, was there anything else about that trip that was unusual? Asking them to try to get me uh, uh, information about, we were swerving all over the place or we ran off the road, and, and none of them uh, answered in that manner. They just simply said, no, just, we were going back, and I didn't know why, but uh, there was nothing else remarkable about the trip back, and that's, the video certainly shows that. There just simply isn't anything remarkable about what we see until the, the bus leaves the roadway. Was that the only video? Yes. We have uh, anecdotal evidence. That is, witnesses tell us about 35 to 40. We've not done any other analysis to see. I know that there are some onboard computers on the uh, bus itself that may provide some technical, but we I haven't examined those, so I don't know if that has provided any uh, window to that. Well, they've been examined. I just haven't seen them. My eyeballs have not laid eyes on them, is all I'm saying. Yes. What I had and what I reported earlier is that we had um, some of the kids who said they heard someone say that it swerved. I never got to talk to anybody who actually told me that. I know in looking at the uh, reports, there were those folks who said they overheard someone else hear that, but I didn't get a chance to talk to anybody who said, yes, I felt it or I saw it swerve. I do know that the... Uh, 
uh, school district uh, uh, has that information. If they choose to release it or not, they can. Um, I, I can go back and look and see if, if I have it. But the truth is we're, we're closing this one out. Why? Because I have no criminal charges that I'm going to move forward with. And so I'm really closing this out because, unfortunately, as important as this case was, it's not the only important case that my office is working on right now. It's time to move those resources to some other cases that um, can use our attention. So I, I know that sounds cold and callous. It's certainly not meant to be that way. But uh, quite frankly, this is a, a case that um, we are concluding and we are going to move on. Certainly not, no. Um, no evidence of that. That's probably a question better for the district. One last question. Uh, posted at 15.15. Thank you.